Have your way, O oh God. Have your way. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way. Oh. Have your way, have your way, have your way, oh Lord, have your way. Come and have your way, Lord Jesus. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit. As we have gathered here today to hear from you, have your way. Speak to our hearts. We are ready to listen, ready to learn, ready to be instructed, ready to receive guidance, ready to be rebuked. Oh, ready, 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 ready to hear from you, Lord. Have your way in the name of Jesus. I open my mouth that you may fill it with the words of wisdom, O oh Lord. Spirit of wisdom and counsel and understanding, have your way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your anointing. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Father, for, for your word, the word that you have uh, prepared for us tonight. Lord, we receive it with thanksgiving and pray, King of all glory. Glory, that as you're planting this word in our hearts like seeds, O oh God, that it will grow, my Father, and fruit, my Father, that will come from me to Jehovah, will be fruit that abide in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you for your grace. I love you for your mercies, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this person, God, who has chosen to watch this video. I pray, everlasting Father, that you will bless them, God. That you will remember them, Father, at the point of need, oh God. When King of all glory, they come before you, Jehovah God. May they find peace. My Father, may they find the answers. May they be instructed, oh God, in Jesus' name. May the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, oh God, that every everlasting father they may see what you're saying and that god that it may be clear jehovah god that which you are speaking to them in the mighty name of jesus father have your way as we talk tonight about proverbs chapter 16 in the name of jesus hallelujah amen amen how are you doing? Thank you so much for um, tuning in. If you are watching live, thank you and God bless you for coming on live with me today. If you are watching the recording on YouTube or Facebook, thank you for choosing to watch this video. I pray that you find the answers that you're seeking because the word of God is just, uh, the word of God is it. If there's something you're looking for, the word of God is it. It is everything. It is the answer. Um, to our prayers everything that we need is right here and so today we are reading proverbs chapter 6 if you're just joining for the very first time we have been reading the book of proverbs from chapter 1 and today we are in chapter 16 so we read the entire book of proverbs we're reading the entire book of proverbs but every day we read one chapter so it's one chapter a day we read the entire chapter then i point out the scriptures or the the proverbs that stood out and then i just open my mouth and the Lord just fills my mouth um, with the words that he wants me to share with you. And so you are so welcome to um, come back again and again and again because there is so much the Lord is um, doing for us using this channel. And so my name is Anin Joroge from Kenya and I thank God to be here. I thank God for the opportunity to share the word of God with you. So um, before we begin the book of Proverbs, we will make a prayer. And the prayer is in the book of um, Ephesians. So if you can go with me in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23, that is where we will find our prayer for spiritual wisdom. We will pray the prayer for spiritual wisdom, then go back to Proverbs chapter 16 
and um, I will read the entire proverb. I think it has about 33 verses. So I will read all of them and then I will come back and share what um, has stood out for me. So let us pray the prayer for spiritual wisdom. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 23. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, towards me, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things listen he put all things under his feet and give him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in law in all so when i say that the bible and the scripture the word of god is uh, the ultimate it this is the reason and he put all things under his feet everything that is is under the feet of jesus and the bible also tells us that god holds everything together by the word of his power. So anything that is outside the word of God cannot stand. Whatever is outside the word of God cannot stand because the winds are coming, the whirlwind is coming, the foundations will be shaken and everything that is not grounded or rooted or planted upon the word of God will shake and it will fall and be destroyed. So we need to have our lives anchored, our lives lives built upon the word of God which is the sure rock of foundation and so we will go to chapter 16 and the Bible says the preparation of the heart belongs to man but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but the Lord weighs the spirits Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. I know we all like that verse. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues with without justice. I will repeat verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues with justice. A, man, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Even though divination is on the lips of the king, his mouth must not transgress in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his wax. It is an abomination for kings to commit wickedness, for a throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him who speaks what is right. Verse 14, a messengers, as messengers of death is the king's wrath, but a wise man will appease it. In the light of the king's face is life, and his favor is like a cloud of latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver, and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Verse 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his ways perverses his soul. 
Pride goes before destruction and a naughty or a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction and a hefty spirit before a fall. Better to be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Verse 21, the wise in heart will be called prudent and sweetness of the lips increases learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it, but correction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. A pleasant or pleasant words are like honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. The person who labors, labors for himself, for his hungry mouth drives him on. An ungodly man digs up evil, and it is on the lips, on his lips like a burning fire. An ungodly man digs up evil, and it is on his lips like a burning fire. Verse 28, a perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of Friends. A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him in the way that is not good. He wings his eyes to devise perverse things. Verse 31. He pursues his lips and brings about evil. The silver haired head is a crown of glory. If it is found in the way of righteousness, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. The Lord is cast into the lap, but it is every decision, but its every decision is from the Lord. I'll repeat verse 33. This is the last of us. The Lord is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word. Teach us your ways that we may not go astray. Amen. So as I was reading, it's a mouthful also, 33 verses. Just like yesterday, we read 33 verses in chapter 15. So there are some um, proverbs that have been repeated. There are some proverbs we've read that we have read again before. Like verse 1. Uh, verse 1, the preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The first part, the preparation of the heart belongs to man. We've seen this before. And then we've seen uh, a just weight and balance are the Lord's. We've seen that. And then we've seen verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. We have seen that before as well. So when we see a repetition, we know that these are very important proverbs that God wants us to um, pay close attention to. And then there is another one, verse 8, better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues with justice. We have extensively spoken about righteousness and being upright in our getting of wisdom. We have also seen, um, where is it? Verse 16, how much better is it? it is to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. So this we have also seen again and again. That the Bible is asking us to get wisdom, get understanding. There are verses we read earlier that would begin with get wisdom, get understanding. My son, get wisdom, get understanding. And then verse 20, he who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Those are some of the verses that we have, uh, or Proverbs that we have seen before. And I pray that we pay close attention so that the Lord can guide us in the way that we should go. So now, verse 2 and 3, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. So this we have seen in this particular chapter. 
about three three times commit your works to the lord and your thoughts will be established so why do we see the repetition the repetition also verse 9 a man's heart plans his ways but the lord directs his paths so the lord is telling us that we can come up with ideas which is good because he has given us brains and we are creators just as our father is our father is a creator and so he has given us the ability to create he has given us the ability to think to imagine to come up with ideas to invent he is however inviting us to come before him to seek for counsel because he says all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes so do not only use your eyes only don't use your eyes only to analyze what is before you to analyze your ways also invite the holy spirit also invite counsel from others that you may be able to be guided and instructed because the lord weighs the spirit the lord will look at your heart he looks at the intention of the heart you have a brilliant idea you have a wonderful idea yes you can make a kill if your ideas go through however the lord is looking at your heart he is looking at your heart are you going to be a faithful steward what are you going to use um the revenue and the finances and the breakthrough and the influence that you're going to to receive or to gain from um from the ideas and the invention that you are pursuing so the lord is interested so much with the heart more than even the the doing so the doing is good. The things that we do are good. Even the preaching is good. Teaching is good. You know, going to church and being a Christian and doing all these things we do um, is good. But the Lord really, what impresses the heart is uh, the Lord is the heart. He sees the heart of man and that is what he looks at. And we see Solomon um, really uh, focusing on this. Even verse 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a hefty spirit before a fall so if you are not a such such a person who is humble enough to ask for counsel humble enough to pray and to um to have a good spirit you know a teachable spirit if you do not have a teachable spirit a, a spirit that can be corrected if you are not someone who can be as uh, such down and instructed and told you know you have a brilliant idea Every, everything you have brought to the table is excellent. However, you need to focus on these other things because um, these are the ones that will make uh, sense for you. And even in business, we see the most of the products that... Um, that prevail or most of the products that do good are usually uh, the least favorite of um, business owners like for instance when you work in hotels you realize that there are some meals um, that are most favorite and the people who work in those restaurants don't like them but they the customers are the ones who you know they like those items they like those products so you find that um, when you're beginning a business I remember working even with the directors and uh, coming up with menus and you know um, there's some food items that would not be their favorite but because um, customers are demanding like they demand of these items maybe they are too expensive that is why the owners do not like them but we see that um, because it's uh, you're focusing on the demands of the client then there is a cut on my window you focus on what the um what do you call i've lost my thought process thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus so you find that um what the market is demanding is what business owners will focus on however before you you implement you need to make sure that you have done your market survey well and you you offer what the market is demanding and not what you think is right so this is what um god is also telling us that there are those things that look right in our own eyes but the lord is one is the one who looks at our hearts and determines what is going to stand if your intentions the intentions of your heart are not pure then God will question that and even if you go ahead with it, the, you, the hand of God is not upon you. You do not have the grace of God and you can really, really suffer. 
um, going through with with your ideas because the Lord weighs the spirits. He looks at the intention of the heart. He looks at the heart. And so because he's looking at the heart and if your heart is humble, if you are humble enough, you do not have pride. You are humble enough to sit for counsel. You are humble enough to ask for advice. Then the Lord provides for you an opportunity to, um, to be guided by people who who see extra who see beyond your eyesight you know and so you are able to be guided and if you are a person who is also proud you you yes you can sit you know it's one thing to sit to seek for counsel it's one thing to sit and listen and it's another thing to implement and respect the the advice that you're being given by people so we know that some people will go seek for advice you know seek for counsel but in the end they will just do what they they want you know they will still do what they want so we know that as well. So let me move on. Um, so the person who labors, labors for himself, for his hungry mouth drives him, drives him on. So the person who labors, labors for himself. So it is um, also good, even as you're laboring for yourself, we've spoken about this, have um, focus on something that is beyond you so that you can also um, build a legacy. You know for yourself when you focus on things and when you focus uh when your labor is focused beyond yourself you build others you know you create opportunities even to bring more people in and uh, to build more people but if everything you're doing is just for you only then you will not even have the bible tells us also we've seen this in proverbs that a, a wise man uh, leaves an inheritance for his children's children but if your focus is on yourself you will not have the ability or even the capacity or even the mindset to focus on uh, acquiring an inheritance for your children's children so you need to also take care of that so there are these three verses that i want us to um, look at we have 10 minutes verse mm -hmm. which one do we start with Verse 28, a perverse man, let me start from 27, an ungodly man digs up evil and it is on his lips like a burning fire. A perverse man sows strife and a whisperer separates the best of friends. A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. He wings his eye to devise perverse things. He pursues his lips a he pursues his lips and brings about evil. So these verses, um, these this, uh, four verses are talking about one, an ungodly man, a perverse man, a violent man, and a man who wings his eye to devise perverse things. So we see that an ungodly man digs up evil. You know those people who when you're talking to them, they're like, eh, tell me, did you know so and so? Did you know what happened? Oh my gosh, you know, they're digging up evil. They're trying to find um, what happened. You know, there is an evil thing that happened or someone, um, you know, suffered something, something, something just happened. And this person, because it's a, he's a, he or she is a gossiper, they're trying to dig evil deeper, trying to see exactly what happened. It, uh, maybe someone was, um, maybe an unfortunate event happened in somebody's life and um, maybe Maybe they, they, they were caught in, you know, a scandal or something like that. Instead of sitting, instead of praying for that person, they are celebrating because they're trying to dig up evil. Uh, let me see NIV, what NIV says about these three verses. A scrounded plot evil and on the lips it is like a scorching fire so it's like a scorching fire you know they're digging 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 and then they spread it they spread and then a perverse man sows strife and a whisperer separates the best of friends so this is a perverse man this this man i hope you don't have such people such people in your circle you don't have such people and i hope you're not like that you're not like the people who just you know want gossip and it's monday 
uh, Monday you've gone to the office and all you do is, you know, you call each other aside to just gossip people, you know, gossip your colleagues and uh, digging up evil. And um, you see a perverse man sows strife. So you've already dug evil, you know, you've gotten the juice of the story and now you're here spreading, spreading, spreading and sowing strife, you know, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. So if you have somebody who just comes to call you aside to tell you, let me tell you and don't tell anybody. That person is able to run from that person. The person who tells you, let me, let me, let me tell you a secret and we be a Siri. Let me tell you something. Did you, did you know? Did you know what happened to so and so? Oh my God. Yes, this is what happened. And that's why they were called in the HR's office. So, you know, you're just gossiping and, um, you know, speaking words that are, are not uh, for edifying. Your, the words that come out of your mouth are not edifying words. So what will happen is because you are gossiping this person, the person you're telling these things will start drawing away from the person you're telling them things about. So it is wise to keep away from a person who tells you things on the side about people. If they really care about that person they're telling you about, they should talk to you in front of them. Otherwise, if they're telling you things they cannot say in front of that person, then this person is a person who sows strife. And it is not good to have such a friend. Verse 29, a violent man entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. So if you have a person in your life, a friend, or if you are this kind of a person who leads people out of their way, you know, calling people out of churches, you know, like you know that what happened to that man of God, that man of God preached me, that man of God did one, two, three, you know, you're there just sowing strife and gossiping men of God and gossiping, um, you know, your bosses and your managers and your HR uh, managers you know the bible also tells us that we need to respect and honor and honor the leaders that god has placed above us but we have people in companies people in churches that are just uh gossipers and people who just stir up strife so it is not wisdom to have such a person in your circle and you see that these people are violent maybe they're not violent in uh physically but they are violent in their words by the words that are coming out of their mouth because the way that they lead the words lead is not good the way they are their their lips lead is not good he wings his eye to devise perverse things we spoke about this person who wings the eye the part earlier i think in the, in the earlier chapters the person who wings the eye is you know like you're in a group of people in a group of people and you know somebody's just you know winking the eye because they are cueing you to to do something evil um or so that you can you know, it's just those people who just uh, speak into your ear, wink, you know, there are those facial gestures um, that they do when somebody walks into the room. You know, it's like there's, there's, there's an, un an ongoing conversation that is not verbal. You know, such people, you know, they, um, they are not good. So if you have such a friend who's, uh, who has this behavior, you know, you Oh, no, they're gossiping. Look how she's dressed today. If somebody's not dressed well, my friend, just go and tell them. Call them on the side and tell them, by the way, you always look good, but today's skirt does not look good on you. It is better to approach the person and talk to them face to face and tell them what you think they need to know, other than calling somebody else on the side to gossip about somebody's skirt. It is foolish. It is evil. And the Lord does not like it. God does not like it. Uh, verse 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit rather than who takes a city. We talked about um, this the other day about... Uh, about anger, about how you express, about how you respond. I think it's when we were saying that a soft answer um, turns away strife. So he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. You know, you can be so strong and mighty and wise and doing all these things, but somebody just steps on your toes and that's it. There's a button just that just goes on and you become another person. And later on, I'm finishing now, later on after I finished the broadcast that day, uh, when I was talking about uh, a soft answer turning away strife, I remember thinking about how, how Christians, how Christians, um, 
change you know when you are in church you are a christian 100 percent speaking in tongues and you know displaying all these um qualities that we talk about you know but when you go out there in the marketplace you leave you leave all these qualities of a christian in your house you know you do not live a godly life uh when it's not sunday on sunday just put up a show basically there are people who just put up a show on sunday but during the week they are different people step on that person's toe in the elevator and you will know you will know they can speak you know um just um this this is not um, the lifestyle God is calling us to live as Christians. He is calling us to live an upright life, live a, to live a godly life, to live a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. You know, be upright, whether you're in church or not, whether there are Christians around you or not. You need to be a person who um, is upright because I may not be there, your Christian friend might not be there working at work with you, but God is there. God sees. The eyes of the Lord are all over. They can see. They can see nothing is hidden from him. He is omnipresent. He can see. He can see. He can see. And as we said earlier that every word, every idle word that comes out of our mouth, we will be held accountable. We will be held accountable for how we made somebody feel. We will be held accountable for how we gossiped. We will be held account for making other people hurt and, and cry. You know, there are people who make people cry in the office. Maybe you are a manager or you are the boss. And how you even treat your staff, how you treat people, how you treat customers is different from how you treat your staff how you treat your suppliers is different from how you you treat your guests how you treat your children is different from how you treat the neighbor's children so this is um there needs to be you know you need to be upright like you don't change based on how people treat you you are you are upright. You don't change based on how people treat you. You don't speak based on how people speak to you. But there is the spring that is within you. You have hidden the word of God in you. So that either you're talking to the matatu guy, you will speak to them the same way you will talk to the, the worship leader. The same way you're speaking to the janitor is the same way you would speak to your pastor. But if you are different people, to di if you are a different person to different people, you are not an upright person. And if you know such a person, you need to stay away from them. Because what will happen is that you will start being like them. And now when you start being like them, there is a way that seems right to man. But the end of it is this you need to watch your tongue watch your ways watch the people you work with if they're not people who are going to are not if you them when you sit with this person like for an hour if the words that you have spoken for that whole hour are not edifying then you need to run for your life otherwise it's going to end very badly and the lord is admonishing us and asking us to just um Pay attention to how we live our lives, that we may not live our lives, um, you know, as though we do not know there is an end coming, as, as though we do not know that we will be held responsible for how we live our lives. So may the Lord help us. So I hope you have been uh, blessed uh, by today's um uh, talk and by today's uh, proverbs so as we said earlier as i conclude that the verses the proverbs that we have been reading so far do not have a storyline so that's why i'm all over the place because that's how the proverbs are tomorrow will be in chapter 17 it has um 28 verses let's see what will happen tomorrow what god will tell us tomorrow but you find that from verse 15 there has been a bit of repetition so you might hear me repeating a few things so let us just flow it means repetition means that um repetition brings uh perfection brings a revelation so the more we continue uh hearing the same things over and over again it means that the holy spirit is emphasizing to ask these things and we need to pay attention to them because they mean something to the holy spirit when you begin we pray 
you know we pray i pray when i come here before i come here i pray and so i know 100 percent that the things that i say here is what god wants you to hear whether it is repeated or whether it is something new that i have said so thank you so much i love you all thank you for always joining thank you for always sharing the videos and for staying tuned to this channel may god bless you if you have not yet subscribed consider subscribing god bless you i will see you again tomorrow thank you father for your people i pray lord that you will bless them increase them in knowledge increase us in knowledge wisdom and understanding that we may walk in the ways that please you oh lord may you redeem us my father where we have fallen astray in the mighty name of jesus if there be time that we have wasted my father chasing against the wind my father my god walking in ways that do not please you working with people my father who do not help us grow but they um they cause us to be stagnant Abba father may you deliver us and redeem us open our eyes that we may see my father even the ways that are before us as you have advised us and spoken to us this morning that king of all glory there are ways that seem the right to man but the end of it is destruction father help us king of all glory that we may not be blinded by pride that holy spirit of god you will open our eyes eyes that we may see even our own hearts if there be any root of pride root of pride in our hearts my lord deliver us from it oh god in the name of jesus for the glory and the honor of your holy name i declare that your people are blessed they're blessed going out blessed coming back in blessed in the cities blessed in the field the works of their hands are blessed in the name of jesus none of these ones will perish because your hand is upon them and you have come that you may save and redeem them oh god in the name of jesus receive honor receive praise receive adoration in jesus precious name we have prayed amen 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 the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit is definitely with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. I will see you again tomorrow.